The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Some Pharisees came to Jesus and said, Go away, leave this area because Herod wants to kill you. He replied, Go and tell that fox, Behold, I cast out demons and I perform healings today and tomorrow. And on the third day, I accomplish my purpose. Yet I must continue on my way today, tomorrow, and the following day, for it is impossible that a prophet should die outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how many times I yearned to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, but you were unwilling. Behold, your house will be abandoned, but I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we're reminded of the simple truth that our enemies are not flesh and blood, but they are principalities, powers, rulers of this present darkness, evil spirits. So whoever you might see in the world that looks like your enemy, just know that at the end of the day, they're not. Right? We're reminded under the great law of love that Jesus uh, repeats to us in last Sunday's gospel. It's the, the core of the Shema of Israel. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. Jesus marries that second law to the first. And love your neighbor as yourself. We know that every person that we encounter is our neighbor. That we are called to treat each person as our neighbor. And so we look here and we see, you know, if our enemy, if our, if our struggle is not with flesh and blood, right, because those are our neighbors whom we're called to love, that the struggle that we might see and live and experience with them, it's something deeper. It's something that's a little bit more invisible. Are there conflicts amongst human beings? Of course. But what's behind it all, right? What's at the root of all of it? It's always something deeper. It's always something spiritual. Um, it's not to over-spiritualize, right? It doesn't mean that everything has to be, I don't know, super mysterious and mystical and whimsical, right? That not everything has to be disincarnate and, and uh, there's no secret knowledge, there's no Gnosticism to this. It's just as simple as knowing that the evil one prowls about looking for the ruin of souls. What's our response to that? To put on the armor of God. Right? That we might be able to resist evil. Right? What does that look like? Stand fast with your loins girded in truth, clothed with righteousness as a breastplate, and your feet shod in readiness for the gospel of peace. Right? In all circumstances, hold faith as a shield. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Lastly, Paul's asking for prayers that he might speak with the boldness and the courage that he must. In other places, he says, Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. It's essential for us to be able to speak these simple truths, to live by them. Uh, to follow the example of Paul with his, his fearlessness and his boldness in order to, uh, to let light enter into this present darkness that we deal with. So it's good for us to pray for those who persecute us. It's good for us to uh, patiently persevere in love for our ideological foes. We look to the Lord today as we approach this holy altar, asking for these gifts, patient perseverance, the ability to love our neighbor as ourself, um, 
and to be wise and prudent enough to see where where the trouble that's being brought to our doorstep has its origin and its influence so we might be properly guarded against those spiritual evils.